episode is the beginning of a series where we're gonna be building a chat application using Rails 5 and Action Cable. And what we're gonna try to do is build something a little bit more robust, like Slack, for example. We're gonna try and build an application where you log in and you see all the channels in the sidebar and those in real time update when there's a new message and all of that stuff. So this is gonna be a lot more complex than the DHH post example that we saw um, with the action cable example chat room thing that he built before. And it's also gonna be more complicated than the notifications thing that I did, which is just like a tiny piece of your website. This is gonna be the core focus of the application. So we'll have the sidebar with chat, and it will get updated in real time. We'll also keep track of the messages and show you where you last read that channel at and all that stuff. So it's gonna be interesting and there's gonna be a lot to it, but we can break that up into a handful of episodes and we'll go tackle all of those. And we'll go build a, an actual chat application so you can get the idea of what it takes to build these bigger um, applications with the Action Cable. So without further ado, this episode, we're just gonna dive into building out all the foundational stuff um, at a high level. So we're gonna talk about building the users, the channels, the connections between users and channels. So next time you log in, we remember where you were at. Um, we'll talk a little bit about recording when you last read. Uh, <clears throat> we'll do the maybe the basic setup for Bootstrap and stuff like that, but we won't get into Action Cable until next episode. So if all this is new to you, then keep watching, otherwise you can kind of skip forward to the next episode if you want to dive into the deep end. So, without further ado, let's uh, get going. Of course, first things first, let's make sure that we're using Rails 5. This has officially been released now, so we can dive into that. Um, and we have the latest version installed, so we can go and create our chat application. So we'll say Rails new chat and once that's installed, let's cd into chat. Let's open up our gem file, install a couple gems. We'll, uh, we'll use bootstrap sass just to give ourselves a foundation for the UI so that we can kind of build that out quickly. Um, and then we'll also use device as usual in order to authenticate our users. And that should be about it. So we'll install these using bundler and then we'll go and generate our models. So let's think about the models that we're gonna use for this. So number one, we'll have a user model. Number two, we're gonna have a chat room. Uh, we'll probably just call them chat room or room, which, whichever you wanna call it. And while we're on that topic, you might consider not naming your model channel, which is kind of a common term to describe a chat room. Um, especially if you're in IRC or something like that, those channels are now kind of also being used as a term for action cable channels. So these communication channels over the WebSocket is now a word that action cable is using, which means that you might have a little bit of a confusing thing when you glance at the code and see that there's a channel model, but there's also a channel in action cable. So. As long as those two don't conflict, you can use the word channel for it in your database models, but it's a little confusing if you're using the same term to describe two different things. Now, the action cable thing, I believe, is namespace, so you would be fine with that, but just something to keep in mind as you go forward. So let's generate our device install, um, and let's just get back into building this. So let's generate users, but let's have a username for the users so we can show that next to the chat messages instead of like an email address. And let's talk about generating that uh, chat room model. So we need to generate the chat room model. I'm gonna generate a scaffold for the sake of doing that. So the scaffold will be a lot easier for us to automatically just have all those views. We can go edit all of them, but we will have something to see, and kind of play with out of the box. So we'll use a scaffold for, let's call them chat room. And each chat room is going to have a name. And um, let's see, that's probably it. Each chat room is gonna have many messages and it will also have many users through a join table. So we'll have that and that's going to define the connection between when you sign in 
and you join a bunch of channels. When you sign out and you come back, you'll be able to see those same channels that you joined. And then that way, all these channels don't have to always be connected to the user or you don't have to choose one every single time. You automatically go back to the channels that you were already previously interested in. I'm just gonna run the scaffold for chat room and if we decide we need to change it later, we can change it. So we'll just modify that as necessary, but for now, this is good. Let's also generate that model um, in between the chat room and the user. So this is probably just gonna be uh, really simple and we'll say chat room user and we'll have a chat room references and we'll have a user references and voila, we're done. Um, that is the join table. We'll create the resources uh, controller and routes in order for you to like click on a channel and join it. Um, that will of course need to be a feature uh, so that we can save that permanently. But that's really as simple as those are. One feature here that we're gonna delay until talking about in a future episode is the idea of marking the channels uh, and the user's last read at timestamp. So this is nice because if you are reading a chat that has many users in it, there's a lot of conversation happening. If you see a line in there that says like, you saw everything up until here, but then you logged out and everything below it is new, that's a super useful feature and we can probably add something in here into these, these models so that we could say, well, this user um, last read this message. We could update that as we go and we could put that in here and then the UI uh, front end could determine that as well. So this is important that it needs to be server side because that um, should propagate to all your devices, for example. So we don't want it to be stored client side in JavaScript in like a cookie or something, because then that way we don't actually get to persist that. And if you sign on on your iPhone, you wouldn't actually know what you last read at. So it needs to be something that's done server side, but we'll talk more about this in depth in a future episode. And we'll also merge that in as a feature all on its own. And so if we need to make adjustments to this model, we can go do it then later on. And this feature can be separate because really we're trying to set up the bare bones structure for everything right now. So um, we do need messages because what is a chat room without messages? We have users, but those messages uh, are kind of the key crucial piece. So let's generate a model called message and this, uh, is of course going to reference a chat room. It's also gonna reference a user, whoever posted it, and we're gonna have some uh, text for the body. And really that's gonna be about it because these messages are gonna be pretty plain and simple. We'll display the username, we'll display the text, and probably somewhere on the side we'll show where the, um, where the time was when it was posted. So that we can show up on the side, um, but we can use like the create it at method for that. It's already baked in to all of your models. So let's run RakeDB Migrate and get all of those in our database. What I like to do is after we create our models, let's make sure that we have all the associations set up. Um, and most of those were just gonna be the has many's because the references uh, will actually insert belongs to for you, which is pretty nifty. So let's go into our models folder and take a look at what we've got. So we have a, a chat room which has many chat room users and has many users through chat room users. Chat room also has many messages, of course, and that is really that. So a chat room, of course, belongs to, a chat room user belongs to a chat room and a user. That's about it. A message belongs to a chat room and a user, and that's also about it. But the user is going to need um, a couple of things, just like the chat room. So it's gonna has many chat room users, has many chat rooms, and has many messages. So we'll have all of that here, um, and that will be defined, of course. This should be through chat room users and so that connection will now be set up and we can go and create those chat rooms and the users and all of that stuff so 
Pretty quickly, we have all of our database structure set up, but we'll also need to set up a little bit of the UI. So I'm gonna paste in a command here. Basically, this is from the bootstrap SAS readme, if you're, uh, if you're reading that when you set this up. Um, application.css needs to be moved to application.scss because um, we wanna use scss in order to parse this file. Now, this doesn't affect any of the asset um, uh, compilation from the manifest because you know the comment at the top is the manifest stuff. Um, all this is allowing us to do is say we can import uh, bootstrap here at the top and we can also import bootstrap sprockets here. And so this is just going to say, well, if we make this file SCSS, we can also use this file to import bootstrap and kind of use it as a um, as the main place where all of our CSS kind of gets included. And the reason why we need it as SCSS and we're using import instead of require is that this import allows you to define things like brand primary up here um, and you can set it to like red or whatever and this would go and apply to all of Bootstrap. So it has variables um, in your SCSS that can get applied and so you could customize bootstrap this way whereas if you did a require there's no way for you to pass in scss variables into bootstrap in order to customize it so we need to do that in order to make all of that work and then um, i'm going to paste in some code for the application template so that we can have uh, two columns basically First, let's open up application.html.erb and let's paste in the navbar that we want to use. So this is just the regular um, navbar that I've stolen from another side of mine. Um, and this is just some bootstrap uh, HTML for a navbar that goes at the top of the page. And we'll just have this uh, link to chat as the root path. And I've already included some HTML for the uh, navigation so you can click on your username and edit your account or log out and links to sign up and log in will replace that if you're not signed in so this should work and let's run our rails server just to check it out um, and because we have let's first go do this because we have the chat room scaffold we can use that as the root so we can say root to chat rooms index and we can add that in there. And let me go organize this a little bit. And so we'll have that. Now we can run our Rails server and we can open up our localhost 3000. So once this is booted, um, there we go. So we have our navigation. We can click sign up. We can sign up. And we need to add in the username field into the sign up. So we'll do that just in a second. But right now, um, you can click the drop down. We haven't added the drop down uh, JavaScript, so let's do that as well. So we need to require bootstrap sprockets in application.js. So let's do that after Turbolinks. And oops, and paste that in. And so now, if we refresh, not GitHub, but if we refresh our chat app, we should see settings, we can edit, edit our user, and we can also log out, and everything should work just as expected. So next step, let's add that username field into registration so that we can keep track of people's usernames. Now, editing those views with device is really simple, but because we're using Bootstrap, it's also something we have to go customize to fit with the Bootstrap HTML for the forms and stuff. So actually, this past weekend, uh, one of the GoRails community members, Andrew Famera, was working with me um, and we were kind of poking at the idea of like, what if you could just generate the views for devices that were already pre-compatible with uh, Bootstrap? Because both of us recognized that we would go do it once and then go copy and paste it from another application. So he took advantage of that and went and built a gem called Devise Bootstrapped, which you can install in your gem file. And this is super nice because you can say, let's run bundle to install it. Let's run rails g device colon views colon bootstrapped. 
This will install all the views for device, but with tweaks for Bootstrap, so they look nice there. And then once you're done with that, you can actually remove it from your gem file, so you don't have to keep it around. Because chances are you're never gonna run those generators ever again. So voila, you're done, and you have uh, nice views. And you can see that if we now go edit settings, this is now automatically uh, styled with some basic bootstrap stuff and even centered on the page as well. So this is pretty nifty and gives you a good starting grounds for going and modifying your views. Now the view we're specifically looking for um, are the registration ones and we're not gonna modify the sessions to allow you to log in with either an email or a username, but you can also do that. There's a link in the device wiki for how to do login with email or username, and it's really simple, uh, but you can do, go do that. And if you're really interested, let me know and we can do an episode on it, but the instructions in the wiki are really simple, and of course are gonna be up to date, whereas the video might get outdated. So, uh, let's go edit this view. And so now we have this email field here in a form group. We can change this to username in both cases. And let's also say that it's a text field and our email should not be auto-focused. So with that, we can take this and also put it in the edit so that you have the ability to uh, modify both of those. And there you go. So maybe you don't want the user to be able to edit their username after the fact. That's up to you on how you want to control that. We're gonna allow it um, just to keep it succinct. And that's, that's the view portion of this. Now we're gonna go edit the application controller uh, to add the permitted parameters. Now the permitted parameters and device have changed a bunch over the years and the ways of doing that have kind of uh, adjusted. And so this version four that's compatible with Rails 5 has changed once again. And so it's always good just to be able to go look this up in the readme and make sure that you're doing it the right way. Um, so for example, we're just going to grab this snippet here and paste this into our application controller. And so this is basically saying, well, if you are in a device controller, then we'll run this method. And this is saying, let's modify the device permitted uh, params. They have, they call it a sanitizer. For the sign up action, let's also add in the username key. And we can do the same thing for account update. And that way, um, we'll have that available to us when we update our account. So this is basically just inserting that item into the parameters uh, that are allowed. And you don't have to specify like, email and password and password confirmation for any of this stuff because it's already kind of assumed that you're gonna have to have that anyways. So with this installed, we should be able to go and create a new user once we log out of this one with a uh, username. So we'll say go rails, chris at go rails.com, password, password. And now you see go rails up the top right because it did get the uh, username and save it to the model. So that is really the only two things that you need to modify with Devise if you wanna add that in. So we're getting pretty close to having all of our foundational stuff set up. The one thing left is really to make the chat room sidebar. So we wanna have the ability to see all the chat rooms on the side and then the main content of the website will actually be a view of that chat room that you're actively looking at. Because we've already covered quite a lot in this episode, I'm gonna split this into two parts, and the next part will be building out that layout and then also adding the join and leave buttons so you can join and leave those channels. And then once we have that ready, we'll be ready to go and dive into actually building out the message functionality in our app. So until then, I'll talk to you in the next episode. Peace.